Hi everyone, uh, I am Professor Sun Gwon Myung from the NCC GCSB. This is a second part of the Medical Terminology 3, week 3, and I'm going to talk about musculoskeletal systems. Key terms, appendage, this is an any body part attached to a main structure. Articulation is the place of union between two or more bones. This is also called joint. Arthritis. Arthritis is inflammation of a joint. Cruciate ligaments. These are ligaments that cross each other for forming an X-ray within the notch between the femoral condyles. Hematopoiesis is the production and development of blood cells normally in the blood bone marrow. Meatus. Meat means, meat means opening, us means condition. So, meatus is an opening or passage through any part of the body. Now, going to the anatomy and physiology. Muscles. The musculoskeletal system includes muscles, bones, joints, and related structures, such as the tendons, and connective tissue that function in the movement of body, parts, and organs. The muscle tissue is composed of contractile cells or fibers that provide movement of an organ or body part. The muscle tissue contributes to posture, produces body heat, and acts as a protective covering for internal organs. These make up the bulk of the body and have the ability to contract, to relax, to be excited by a stimulus, and to return to their original size and shape. The apparent motion is walking and, and talking. Less apparent motions are the passage and elimination of food through the digestive system, propulsion of blood through the arteries and the construction of the bladder to eliminate urine. There are three types of muscle tissues. The skeletal muscles, the cardiac muscle, and smooth muscles. The skeletal muscles are also called the voluntary or striated muscles whose action is under voluntary control. For example, the muscles that move the eyeballs, tongue, and bones. Except for cardiac muscle, all straightened muscles are voluntary. The cardiac muscle is found only in the heart and makes up most of the wall of the heart. The cardiac muscle shares similarities with both skeletal and smooth muscles. Like a skeletal muscle, they are striated but experiences rhythmic involuntary contractions like smooth muscle. The smooth Muscles are involuntary or visceral muscles. Uh, muscles whose action are involuntary. They are found principally in the visceral organs, the walls of arteries, the walls of respiratory passages, and in the urinary and reproductive ducts. <laughs> the smooth muscles are controlled by the autonomic, which means involuntary, nervous system. This figure shows the selected muscles of the body. You have to memorize all these muscles. Deltoid muscle, triceps brachii, brachioradialis, trapezius, gluteus maximus, biceps femoris, gastrocnemius soleus, Achilles tendon. And in the front side, you can see the biceps brachii, triceps brachii, and in the chest, you can see the pectoralis major. And inside, there are pectoralis minor. And in the face, you can see ocularis oculi muscles, masseter muscles, sternocleidomastoid muscles. And in the abdomen, you can see the rectus abdominis muscle. This table shows the body movements produced by muscle action. The motion, uh, adduction, 
it means uh, moving closer to the midline. Abduction means moving away from the midline. Flexion decreases the angle of a joint. Extension increases the angle of a joint. Rotation moves a bone around it on axis. Pronation turns the palm down. Supination turns the palm up. Inversion moves the sole of the foot inward. Eversion moves the sole of the foot outward. Dorsiflexion elevates the foot. Plantarflexion lowers the foot, points the toe. This figure shows the body movements produced by muscle action. Flexion, extension. Adduction, abduction. Rotation, pronation, supination. Eversion, inversion. Dorsiflexion, plantarflexion. Muscles attached to bones either by flesh or fibrous attachments. In flesh attachments, muscle fibers arise directly from bone and are weaker than a fibrous attachment. In fibrous attachments, the connective tissue converges at the end of the muscle to become continuous and indistinguishable from the periosteum. When the fibrous attachment spans a large area of a particular bone, the attachment is called an aponeurosis found in the lumbar region of the back. When connective tissue fibers form a cord or strap, it is referred to as a tendon. It localizes a great deal of force in a small area of bone. Ligaments are composed of connective tissue and attach one bone to another. Bones provide the framework of the body, protect internal organs, store calcium, calcium and other minerals, and produce blood cells within bone marrow. Together with other soft tissue, most vital organs are enclosed and protected by bones. For example, the bones of the skull protect the brain. The rib cage protects the heart and lungs. There are other important functions. Movement. As muscles contract, tendons and ligaments pull on bones and cause skeletal movement. Hematopoiesis in bone marrow and this continuously uh, produce millions of blood cells to replace those that have been destroyed. And also, uh, there is a storehouse for minerals, particularly phosphorus and calcium. There are four principal types of bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and long bones. Short bones are somewhat cube-shaped. This, these consist of a core of a sponge bone, also known as cancellous bone, that is enclosed in a thin surface layer of compact bone. For example, the bones of the ankles, wrists, and toes. Irregular bones, the bones that cannot be classified as short or long because of their complex shapes, for example, vertebra, and the bones of the middle ear. As for flat bones, uh, exactly what their name suggests, they provide broad surfaces for muscular attachment or protection for internal organs. For example, bones of the skull, shoulder blades, and sternum. As for long bones, they are found in the extremities of the body, such as the legs, arms, and fingers. The parts of a long bone has uh, largely three parts. Diopesis is the shaft or long main portion of a bone. Second is the distal epiphysis and third one is proximal epiphysis. The two ends of the bones that have a somewhat bulbous shape to provide a space for muscle and ligament attachments near the joints. Epiphysis uh, the singular form is the epiphysis. These uh, are made up largely of sponge bone surrounded by a layer of compact bone. The red bone marrow is found within the porous chamber of sponge bone, 
richly supplied with blood and consists of immature and mature blood cells in various stages of development. In an adult, the production of red blood cells occurs. Red bone marrow is also responsible for the formation of white blood cells, leukopoiesis, and platelets. The articular cartilage is a type of elastic connective tissue that provides a smooth surface for movement of joints that covers both ends of the epiphysis. The medullary cavity is the bone shaft or diaphysis. This consists of a compact bone forming a cylinder that surrounds a central canal called the medullary cavity which contains a fairly yellow marrow in adults and consists primarily of fat cells and a few scattered blood cells. The periosteum is a dense white fibrous membrane that covers the remaining surface of the bone. It contains numerous blood and lymph vessels and nerves. In growing bones, the inner layer contains the bone forming cells known as osteoblasts. Because blood vessels and osteoblasts are located here, the periosteum provides a means for bone repair and general bone nutrition. Also serves as a point of attachment for muscles, ligaments, and tendons. This figure shows the longitudinal structure of a long bone. The number one is the diaphysis, and at the both ends, uh, you can see the proximal epiphysis, this is, which is closer to the heart, and the uh, distal epiphysis. And number five, you can see the auricular cartilage. And uh, at the proximal epiphysis, you can see the sponge bone, which contains red marrow. And in the diaphysis, uh, from the outside, there are a periosteum, compact bone, and the medullary cavity, which contains yellow marrow. Uh, surface features of bones, uh, rarely smooth, rather. The surfaces of bones consist of projections, depressions, and openings that provide sites for muscle and ligament attachment. The surfaces of bones also provide pathways and openings for blood vessels, nerves, and ducts. Various types of projections are evident in bones, some of which serve as points of articulation. The surfaces of bones may be rounded, sharp, or narrow, or have a large ridge. Depressions and openings are cavities and holes in a bone. This table shows the surface features of bones, projections, articulating surfaces, depressions, and openings. Uh, the skeletal system of a human adult consists of 206 individual bones. For anatomical purposes, the human skeleton is divided into the actual skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. As for the actual skeleton, this is divided into three major regions, skull, rib cage, and vertebral column. The actual skeleton contributes to the formation of body cavities and provides protection for internal organs such as the brain, spinal cord, and organs enclosed in the thorax. This figure shows the anterior view of the skeleton from the, bar, from the upper part. You can see the skull, maxilla, mandible, and for the upper extremities, you can see the humerus and radius ulna, carpus, metacarpus, phalanges, phalanges, and in the chest part, you can see the sternum in the center and the ribs. And on the upper part of the chest, you can see the clavicle and scapula. This forms the pectoral girdle. And in the midline, you can see the vertebral column. And in the pelvic 
girdle, you can see ilium, sacrum, coccyx, pubis, and ischium. And in the lower extremities, you can see the femur, tibia, and fibula, and tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. And underneath, you can see the patella bone. First, the skull consists of cranial bones and facial bones. With the exception of one facial bone, all other bones of the skull are joined together by sutures. Sutures are the lines of junction between two bones, especially of the skull, and they are usually immovable. This figure shows the bony structures of the skull. A shows the cranial bones, uh, number one, frontal bone, and you can see the temporal bones in the both sides. And the posterior part, you can see the parietal bone and occipital bone. And between the bones, you can see the uh, squamosal suture and coronal suture. And uh, on the face, you can see the ethmoid bone and sphenoid bone. And the facial bones compose of nasal bone, lacrimal bone, zygomatic bone, bomo, maxilla, and the mandible. The cranial bones have eight bones, collectively known as the cranium or skull. These enclose and protect the brain and the organs of hearing and equilibrium. Cranial bones are connected to muscles to provide head movements, chewing motions, and facial expressions. Fontanelles. Uh, these are membranous areas in an infant's skull where the bone making process is not yet complete. Their chief function is to allow a small compression of the skull during the delivery process. With age, they ossify and become fixed. The frontal bone forms the anterior portion of the skull, forehead, and the roof of the bony cavities that contain the eyeballs. The parietal bone is situated on each side of the skull, just behind the frontal bone. Together they form the upper sides and roof of the cranium. Each parietal bone meets the frontal bone along the coronal suture. This is a single occipital bone. And a single occipital bone forms the back and base of the skull and contains an opening in each space through which the spinal cord passes. There are two temporal bones, one on each side of the skull. They form part of the lower cranium. And the spinal bone is located at the middle part of the base of the skull. This forms a central wedge that joins with all other cranial bones holding them together. And the esmoid bone is a, a very light and sponge bone. This forms most of the bony area between the nasal cavity and parts of the orbit of the eyes. All facial bones, with the exception of the mandible, lower jaw bone, are joined together by sutures and are immovable. The movement of the mandible is needed for speaking and chewing. Chewing is uh, called mastication. Maxilla uh, are paired the upper jaw bones. They are fused in the midline by a suture. The maxilla bones form the upper jaw and heart plate, roof of the mouth. Cleft palate means if the maxillary bones do not fuse properly before birth, the cleft palate can occur. The nasal bones are too thin and nearly rectangular bones that lie side by side and are fused medi medially, forming the shape and the bridge of the nose. Lacrimal bones are located at the corner of each eye. The gigantic bones are located on the side of the face below the eyes and form the higher portion of the cheeks below and to the sides of the eyes. They are commonly referred to as the cheekbone.
The bomo is a single thin bone that forms the lower part of the nasal septum. Paranasal sinuses are cavities located within the cranial and facial bones. Frontal, ethmoidal, spanoidal, and maxillary sinuses are named after the bones in which they are located. This shows the paranasal sinuses, frontal sinuses, ethmoidal sinuses, maxillary sinus, and spanoidal sinus. Thorax. This is the internal organs of the chest thorax, including the heart and lungs. These are enclosed and protected by a bony rib cage. The thorax consists of 12 pairs of ribs, all attached to the spine. Two ribs are the first seven pairs, attached directly to the sternum by a strip of costal cartilage. And the next five pairs of ribs are the first ribs, and they are the costal cartilage fastened directly to the sternum and floating ribs are the last two pairs of first ribs which are not joined even indirectly to the sternum but attached posteriorly to the thoracic vertebra here this shows the thorax you can see the true ribs from the first two ribs to the seventh so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, these are true ribs. And the remaining eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, five ribs are false ribs. And the floating ribs are two. And in the center of the thorax, you can see the sternum which consists of the manubrium body and the gyphoid process the vertebral column is composed of 26 bones called the vertebra the vertebral column supports the body and provides a protective bony canal for the spinal cord there are four curves in a healthy normal spine these help make it resilient and maintain balance. The cervical and lumbar regions are curved forward. Uh, the thoracic and sacral regions curve backward. Abnormal curves may be due to a congenital defect, poor posture, or bone disease. The vertebral column consists of five regions of bones each deriving its name from each location within the spinal column. First, cervical vertebra. The number is 7. Thoracic vertebra, 12. Lumbar vertebra, 5. Sacral vertebra, 5. Sacral vertebra, and coccyx. The cervical vertebra form the skeletal framework of the nerve. The first cervical vertebra is called the atlas which supports the skull, and second one is the axis, which makes possible the rotation of the skull on the neck. The thrust vertebra are under the seventh cervical vertebra, which support the chest and serve as a point of articulation for the ribs. The next five vertebra are the lumbar vertebra, they are situated in the low back area and carry most of the weight of the torso. Sacral vertebra are five sacral vertebra, which are fused into a single bone in the adult and are referred to as the sacrum. Lastly, the coccyx is the tail of the vertebral column, which consists of four or five fragmented fused vertebra. Intervertebral discs are uh, these separate vertebra flat round structures which are composed of a fibrocartilaginous substance with a gelatinous mass in the center, nucleus purposes. Uh, there is this condition, disease, herniation of an intervertebral disc, HIBD. When disc material protrudes into the neural canal, 
pressure on the adjacent nerve root causes pain, aka herniated nucleus purposes, HMP, or ruptured disc or slipped disc. This figure shows the lateral view of the vertebra column. Cervical vertebra, thoracic vertebra, lumbar vertebra, sacral vertebra, coccygeal vertebra. And uh, this shows the superior view of the vertebra. In the center, there is the body, there is a body, and uh, in both sides, you can see the transverse processes. And the uh, uh, posterior part, you can see the spinous process, and there is a canal for spinal cord. Appendicular skeleton. An appendix means something that is joined to or connected with something larger or more important. An appendix consists of bones of the upper and lower limbs and their girdles that attach the limbs to the actual skeleton. The appendicular skeleton is distinguished with blue color in figure 10-4. The difference between the axial and appendicular skeletons is the axial skeleton protects internal organs and provides a central support for the body but the appendicular skeleton enables the body to move and the ability to walk, run or catch a ball is possible because of the movable joints of the limbs that make up the appendicular skeleton. First, the pectoral girdle, which is shoulder girdle, it consists of two bones, the anterior clavicle, collarbone, and the posterior scapula, triangular shoulder blade. The primary function of the pectoral girdle is to attach the bones of the upper limbs to the axial skeleton and provide attachments for muscles and that aid the upper limb movements. The paired pectoral structures and their associated muscles form the shoulders of the body. As for the upper limbs, there are arm, forearm, and the hand. Anatomically speaking, the arm is only the part of the upper limb between the shoulder and elbow. The limb or appendage consists of a humerus upper arm bone, and the humerus articulates with the radius and a lot at the elbow. The radius and a lot form the skeleton of the forearm. The bones of the hand, there are eight coppers with five radiating metacarpals, palm, and ten radiating phalanges, fingers. The pelvic girdle, hip girdle, is a basin-shaped structure that attaches the lower limbs to the actual skeleton, along with its associated ligaments. The pelvic girdle supports the trunk of the body and provides protection for the visceral organs of the pelvis. The differences between male and female pelvises are in size and shape, but they share the same basic structures. The differences are attributable to the function of the female pelvis during uh, childbearing. The female pelvis is shallower than the male pelvis, but wider in all directions. The female pelvis not only supports the enlarged uterus as the fetus matures, but also provides a large opening to allow the infant to pass through during birth. Female and male pelvis are divided into the ilium, ischium, and pubis. These three bones are fused, fused together in the adult to form a single bone called the innominate bone, hip bone. The bladder is located behind the symphysis pubis. The rectum is in the curve of the sacrum and coccyx. In the female, the uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, and vagina are located between the bladder and the rectum. The lower limbs 
support the complete weight of the erect body and are subjected to exceptional stresses, especially in running or jumping. They are stronger and thicker than comparable bones of the upper limbs. There, are, there is the difference between the upper and lower limb bones. The lighter bones of the upper limbs are adapted for mobility and flexibility. The massive bones of the lower limbs are specialized bone stability and weight bearing. There are three parts of each lower limb, the thigh, the leg, and the foot. Thigh consists of a single bone called the femur, which is the largest, longest, and strongest bone in the body. The leg is formed by two parallel bones, the tibia and the fibula. And the seven tarsals, ankle bones, resemble metacarpals, wrist bones in structure. And lastly, the foot, uh, there are the metatarsals, which consist of five small long bones, numbered one to five, beginning with the great toe on the medial side of the foot and the much smaller phalanges, toes, joints, or articulations. To allow for body movements, bones must have points where they meet, which means articulate. Articulating points form joints that have various degrees of mobility. Some are freely movable, this arthrosis. Others are only slightly movable, MP arthrosis. And the remaining are totally immovable, syn arthrosis. Synovial joints are joints that allow movement. The ends of the bones are encased in a sleeve-like extension of the periosteum called the joint capsule which binds the articulating bones to each other. The synovial membrane is a membrane that surrounds the inside of the capsule. There is the synovial membrane secretes a lubricating fluid, which is synovial fluid, within the entire joint capsule. The ends of each of the bones are covered with a smooth layer of cartilage that serves as a cushion. Now I'm going to talk about the medical word element. Ankle means stiffness. Ankylosis is immobility and stiffness of a joint. Arthro means joint. Arthritis, inflammation of a joint. Kypo means mountain. Kyposis means humpback posture. Lamina. Lamina means part of a vertebral arch. Laminectomy is an excision of the lamina. Load means curve, sway back. So lodosis is sway back posture. Myelo is bone marrow, myelopathy. Ortho means straight. Orthopedist is a physician who specializes in the treatment of musculoskeletal disorders. Pad means foot. Osteo means bone. Osteoma is a benign bony tumor. Pad means foot. Scully means crooked. Scoliosis is an abnormal, abnormal curvature of the spine. Thorac means chest. Acromion. Acromion is a projection of scapula. Brachy means arm. Calcani means calcaneum. Carp means carpus. Sepal means head. Cervical means neck. Clavicle, clavicle. Coast means ribs. Cranny means cranium or skull. Craniotomy is an incision of the cranium. Tommy means incision. Dactyl means fingers. Dactylomegaly is of not only large size of fingers and toes. Femur means femur. Feeble means fibula. Humero means humerus. Ilium means ilium. Ischium, ischium. Lumba means loins, low back. Metacarp means metacarpus. Metatars means metatarsus. Patella means patella, kneecap. Pelvis means pelvis. Pad means foot. Podiatry, podiatry means treatment and prevention of conditions of the feet, phalanges, 
means bones of fingers and toes. Pub also means pelvis bone. Ready means radiation or radius. One of the bone. Radial means pertaining to the radius. Spondylo or vertebral. They all mean vertebra. So spondylitis means inflammation of the vertebra. Stun means sternum. TB means tibia. Leomy means smooth muscle. So leomyoma is a tumor consisting principally of smooth muscle tissue. Muscle or oh my, they mean muscle. So muscular means pertaining to muscles. Rapto means straight, striated muscle. Raptomyo means striated muscles. Ah, rapto just means striated. <coughs> and chondral, cartilage, chondritis. Chondritis means the inflammation of cartilage. Fascia means fascia. Fibro means fiber. Synov means synovial membrane. Tend, tend, tendon means tendon. Asthenia means weakness. Myasthenia means muscle weakness and abnormal fatigue. Blast means embryonic cell. <coughs> Clasia or clast means to break. So osteoclasia means surgical fracture of a bone. Desis means fixation or binding. Arthrodesis means binding together of a joint. Malacia means softening. Chondral malacia means softening of the articular cartilage. Chondro means cartilage. Physis means growth. Epiphysis. Epi means above, so epiphysis means the end of a long bone. Porosis means porous opening. So osteoporosis means the disorder characterized by loss of bone density. Scopy, visual examination. Arthroscopy is an endoscopic examination of the interior of a joint sub under supra above supra costal means above the ribs in here cost means ribs sin means together or joined in pathology joints are especially vulnerable to constant wear and tear uh, repeated motion disease trauma and aging affect joints as well as muscles and tendons Overall, disorders of the musculoskeletal system are more likely to be caused by injury than disease. Orthopedics is the branch of medicine concerned with the prevention, diagnosis, care, and treatment of musculoskeletal disorders. Orthopedist is the physician who specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of musculoskeletal disorders. As per bone disorders, First, fractures, and actually the disorders involving the bones, there are fractures, infections, osteoporosis, and spinal curvatures. First, the fractures, uh, when a bone is broken, they are called fractures. There are several types of fractures, classified by extent of damage. <clears throat> Closed or simple fracture is one in which the bone is broken but no external wound exists. Open or compound fracture is a broken bone and an external wound that leads to the site of fractures. Complicated fracture uh, in which a broken bone has injured some internal organ such as when a broken rib pierces a lung. This is called a complicated fracture. Comminuted fracture means the bone has broken or splintered into pieces. 
impacted fracture. When the bone is broken and one end is wedged into the interior of the other bone. When the line of fracture does not include the whole bone, which is called, that is called incomplete fracture. Green stick fracture. When one side of a long bone is broken and the other side is bent, the green stick fracture occurs in children because their bones contain more collagen than adult bones and tend to splinter rather than break completely. Collins fracture. Uh, a break at the lower end of the radius occurs just above the wrist which causes displacement of the hand and usually occurs as a result of flexing a hand to cushion a fall. These figures show types of fractures. First one, closed fracture, just broken. And second one is open fracture. Uh, as you can see here, the bone is protruding out uh, through the skin and complicated fracture. In here, the rib uh, is broken and also pierces into the lung. Community fracture. So you can see the several pieces. Impacted bone fracture and incomplete fracture. And number seven shows the green stick fracture, uh, which is usually seen in children. One side is broken, but the other side is just bent. The last one shows the colonist fracture. And also there is a hairline fracture. This is a minor fracture in which all portions of the bone are in perfect alignment. The hairline fracture is seen on radiographic examination as a very thin hairline between the two segments but not extending entirely through the bone. The pathological or spontaneous fractures can be caused by a disease process such as a neoplasm or osteoporosis. Unlike other repairs of the body, bones sometimes require months to heal. Some fractures need to be immobilized to ensure that bones unite soundly in a suitable position. In most cases, this is achieved with bandages, cast, traction, or a fixation device. Certain fractures, particularly those with bone fragments, require surgery to reposition and fix bones securely so the surrounding tissues heal. In addition to promoting healing, immobilization prevents further injury and reduces pain. And now I'm going to talk about Infections. Osteomyelitis is the infection of the bone and bone marrow. This can be acute or chronic. Osteomyelitis is primarily caused by pus forming pyogenic bacteria. Osteomyelitis usually begins with local trauma to the bone, causing a blood clot, hematoma. Uh, osteomyelitis is more difficult to effectively treat than soft tissue infections. Osteoporosis is a common metabolic bone disorder in the elderly, particularly in postmenopausal women, and especially women older than age 60. Osteoporosis is characterized by decreased bone density that occurs when the rate of bone resorption, loss of substance, exceeds the rate of bone formation. There are several causes of osteoporosis. Disturbances of protein metabolism, protein deficiency, disuse of bones due to prolonged periods of immobilization, estrogen deficiencies associated with menopause, a diet lacking vitamins of calcium, and long-term administration of high doses of corticosteroids. If there is no pressure, there is no pain in patients with osteoporosis. They complain of bone pain, typically 
in the bone which may be caused by repeated microscopic fractures. And now I'm going to talk about scoliosis. <clears throat> Spinal cords, uh, any persistent abnormal deviation of the vertebral column from its normal position may cause spinal curvature. There are three common deviations, scoliosis, kyphosis, and lordosis. Scoliosis is an abnormal la la lateral curvature of the spine, either to the right or left. Some rotation of a portion of the vertebral column may also occur. The treatment depends on the severity of the coverage and may vary from exercises, physical therapy, and back braces to surgical intervention. Kyphosis is an abnormally excessive convex coverage, more commonly known as humpback or hunchback. The causes are rheumatoid arthritis, rickets, poor posture, or chronic respiratory disease. Lastly, lordosis is an abnormal inward coverage, more commonly known as sway back. Here, you can see the several spinal curvatures. Normally, the first one shows the normal curvature, but uh, in scoliosis, you can see the curvature to the uh, right side, like this. And in the kyphosis, flex, and lordosis, you can see the sway back. And arthritis, this is an inflammation of a joint, usually accompanied by pain, swelling, and commonly changes in structure. There are main, several main types of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, and gouty arthritis, or gout. First, RA, rheumatoid arthritis, is a systemic disease characterized by inflammatory changes in joints and their related structures. They result, it results in crippling deformities. RA is caused by an autoimmune reaction of joint disease. There is no specific cure, but NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, DMARs, physical therapy and orthopedic measures are used in the treatment of less severe cases. Here you can see the rheumatoid arthritis in the hand. Here. And also osteoarthritis is also called degenerative joint disease, DJD. This is the most common type of connective tissue disease. Uh, the most common pathologies are cartilage destruction and newborn formation at the edges of joints, spurs. And gouty arthritis is also called gout. It is a metabolic disease caused by the accumulation of uric acid crystals in blood. These crystals may become deposited in joints and soft tissue near joints causing painful swelling and inflammation. And also, there are cancers in the musculoskeletal system. Primary bone cancer arises directly from bone or bone tissue, barrier, and the secondary bone cancer arise, arises in another region of the body and spread to bone, metastasize. They can be caused by malignant cells that have metastasized to the bone from the lungs, breast, or prostate. Sarcoma is the malignant that originates from bone, fat, muscle, cartilage, bone marrow, and cells of the lymphatic system. There are three major types of sarcomas, fibrosarcomas, osteosarcomas, and Ewing sarcomas. And sarcomas, fibrosarcomas, develop in cartilage and generally affect the pelvis, usually between ages 50 and 60. But osteosarcoma develops from bone tissue and generally affect the knees, upper arms, and upper legs, usually between ages 22, 20, and 25. Ewing sarcoma develops from 
primitive nerve cells in bone marrow. This usually affects young boys between ages 10 and 12. There are several signs and symptoms for sarcoma. They include swelling and tenderness with a tendency toward fractures in the affected area. Generally, combination therapy is used for the treatment of sarcoma, including chemotherapy for management of metastasis and radiation when the tumor is radiosensitive. In some cases, amputation is required. And as per diagnostic symp symptomatic and related terms, first, ankylosis. Ankyl means bent. Losis means abnormal condition. Ankylosis is the stiffening and immobility of a joint as a result of disease, trauma, surgery, or abnormal bone fusion. Carpal tunnel syndrome, CTS, is painful condition resulting from compression of the median nerve within the carpal tunnel. Claudication is a limping. Contracture is a fibrosis of connective tissue in skin, fascia, muscle, or joint capsules. Crepitation is dry, grating sound or sensation caused by bone ends rubbing together, indicating a fracture or joint destruction. Electromyography is the use of electrical stimulation to record the strength or muscle contraction. Exacerbation means increasing severity of a disease or of any its symptoms. Ganglion cyst is a tumor of tendon cyst or joint capsule commonly found in the wrist. Hypotonia is loss of muscular tone. Hemarthrosis is effusion of blood into a joint cavity. Multiple myeloma is the primary malignant tumor that infiltrates the bone and red bone marrow. Osteophyte is bony outgrowth. Phantom limb means perceived sensation following amputation of a limb that the limb still exists. Prosthesis, replacement of a missing part by an artificial substitute such as an artificial extremity. Rickets is form of osteomalacia in children caused by vitamin D deficiency. Sequestron is the fragment of necrosed bone that has become separated from surrounding tissue. Spondylolisthesis is any forward sleeping so luxation of a vertebra over the one below it. Spondylosis, degeneration of the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebra and related tissues. Sprain is tearing of a ligament tissue. Strain is to exert physical force in a manner that may result in injury, usually muscular. Subluxation is partial or incomplete dislocation. Dissociative talipes is any number of foot deformities, especially those occurring congenitally, also called club foot here. And arthrography is a series of radiographs taken after injection of a radio pack substance into a joint cavity. CT scan. DEXA. DEXA is a dual energy X-ray absorption metry. This is a technique to measure bone density for purpose of diagnosis and management of osteoporosis. Discography is a radiological examination of the intervertebral disc structures by injecting a contrast medium. Myelography is the radiography of the spinal cord. Uh, regarding the therapeutic procedures, closed reduction is a manual correction of fractures without incision. Casting is applica application of a solid, stiff depressing formed with a plaster of Paris or other material to a body, partly immobilized in during the healing process. Splinting, use of an orthopedic device to an injured part, body part 
for immobilization, stabilization, and protection during the healing process. Traction is using weight and pulleys to align or immobilize a fracture and facilitate the healing process. Amputation is partial or complete removal of a limb. Arthrocentesis is puncture of a joint space to remove accumulated fluid. Arthroclasia, clasia means break, to break. So surgical breaking of an ankylosed joint to provide movement. Arthroscopy is a visual examination of a joint, especially the knee. Bursectomy is the excision of a bursa. Bone grafting is implanting or transplanting bone tissue from another part of the body. Laminectomy is an excision of the posterior arch of a vertebra. Open reduction is a treatment of bone fractures using surgery to place the bones in proper position. Sequestrectomy is the excision of a sequestral segment of a necrosed bone. Synovectomy is the excision of a synovial membrane. In pharmacology, unlike other medications that treat specific disease, most pharmacological agents for muscular disorders are used to treat symptoms. Acute musculoskeletal conditions such as strains, sprains, and pulled muscles are treated with analgesics and anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, salicylate muscle relaxants, opioid analgesics, or narcotics are commonly used to treat pain either by anesthetizing the area or by decreasing the inflammation. Calcium supplements are used to treat hypocalcemia. Drugs used to treat musculoskeletal disorders, calcium, cold salts, NSAIDs, opioid analgesics, salicylate, skeletal muscle relaxants. Now, this is the last part of this lecture. Abbreviations ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, AE above the elbow, AK above the knee. Uh, these are uh, uh, the term used uh, surgery in the orthopedics. PE below the elbow, BK below the knee. CA calcium, CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome, DJD, degenerative joint disease, EMG, electromyography, FX, fracture, HMP, herniated nucleus purposes, uh, IM, intramuscular, IV, intravenous injection, MG, myasthenia gravis, and says non-steroidal non -steroidal, anti-inflammatory drugs. P. Phosphorus. PCL. Posterior cruciate ligament. RA. Rheumatoid arthritis. RF. Rheumatoid factor. ROM. Range of motion of the joint. THA. Total hip arthroplasty. TKA. Total knee arthroplasty. Okay. This is it. Okay. Uh, see you again. Bye.